Hey fighters, it's Jasmine from Fight the New Drug here. Um, today we're going live to have a conversation with Alan Smith. So Alan is the executive director of Saving Innocence. Um, Saving Innocence is a nonprofit organization who um, whose mission is to help serve, empower, and advocate for child victims of sex trafficking here in the United States. Um, we're going to talk to Alan about the work that Saving Innocence does to help these identified victims of sex trafficking, what they're doing to help others realize the issue of sex trafficking, and then what you can do to help. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and try to get Alan into this live. Awesome. Okay. So while we're waiting for Alan to join, oh, hi. Hey, hi, Jasmine. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, good to be with you this morning. Good to be with you, too. Oh, my heck. You do love Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, we turned my daughter moved out years ago and we turned her bedroom into kind of a movie room. And so I got to put all the posters of the movies up that, that I like. So we got That's Braveheart. Awesome. And <laughs> yeah. I know that you love Braveheart um, because I was, well, when I was reading your book, um, men, uh, fight for me. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that's so funny, um, that I was just reading that and read that about you. And now here we are with your Braveheart posters. Um, so I gave our audience a little bit of an introduction about what Saving Innocence does, but I want to give you the opportunity to explain it. Um, obviously you know it better than me. So do you want to just explain to our audience, like what Saving Innocence does in the space of, um, child sex trafficking? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the shorter answer is um, there's kind of three big buckets, uh, prevent, recover and restore child victims of sex trafficking. We're based in Los Angeles, although we train and consult around the country. Uh, but the prevention looks like a lot of education. We go into the places where the most vulnerable children are. Uh, oftentimes that's a juvenile hall or a group home or certain schools. They'll invite us in and we'll uh, take them through a curriculum and make them aware of the dangers out there. Um, yeah. We'll also help train professionals in the field, uh, a lot of different ways that we do that. Uh, the, recover, or the, the recovery process is we're contracted by LA County. It's called the First Responder Protocol. So we have a team of rock star case manager advocates that are on call waiting for their phone to ring. Mm -hmm. And um, we go out in the middle of the night usually and step into an active trafficking situation uh, along with a, a team of some county social workers and others and um, and then we walk with that child for as long as it takes to get her safe and secure and moving in the right direction um, and then that kind of the restoration part there's a lot of different it looks a lot of different ways we have long-term case management for these kids and walk with them and you know get them back into school and get them all the the things that they might need tangible needs and connect them to services yeah. that they might need and um and it's our honor to walk with these kids through whatever it takes. And uh, it's not necessarily a quick exit because they've been right. abused and traumatized so much. But that's basically the short answer of what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I just, important context for the audience to know, because I don't think a lot of people realize this. Um, so by by definition, under U.S. federal law, anyone engaging in a commercial sex act that's under the age of 18 is a victim of child sex trafficking. So there's no such thing as a child prostitute. Like it's right. very important that we don't use that kind of language because right. um, by by definition, these um, children are actually victims um, of child sex trafficking. So with that, I just, I wanna ask, why is it important for your organization to address pornography when talking about child sex trafficking? Yeah, I, we're so grateful for, you know, your organization, Fight the New Drug, because you're doing a lot of great work out there. And the reason why it's specifically important to us is, um, you know, pornography is a major on ramp to the sexual exploitation of people and eventually children. Yeah. It, it desensitizes the user and the watcher of it. It expands the boundaries of what seems to be allowable and appropriate. And, uh, you know, you would know the stat better than I do, but I've heard things like, um, you know, the average age of first exposure is eight, nine, 10 years old. And so you have young kids that should be out there playing in the street are seeing images that they weren't meant to see. And it's causing their brain to do different things that they shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, a couple things quickly related to our space of trafficking. Um, we've had active trafficking victims being trafficked into a motel room or into a movie set of some kind being raped over and over on camera. And then that, then that film makes it up onto a porn site. And it looks like a typical pornography video. And one survivor said, every time someone's watching that film, there's millions of views on this particular one, they say they're watching me being raped. And so, 
you know, anytime I can get an audience with, with men, because I'm a man, I know there are women users as well, but it seems like the biggest part of the problem in that space is men. I, mm -hmm. I want to look guys in the eyes. Are you kidding me, fellas? Like, we're going to find some kind of enjoyment watching some kid being raped. And um, so it's, it's really important because it's an on-ramp to future buyers, future traffickers, and future victims. It's getting them going down a path where the end result is disastrous. Absolutely. Yeah, and we're so grateful for your organization, but also to have you in this space as a man talking to other men. Um, and like I said, we'll get to um, the book that you wrote kind of on that <laughs> issue. Um, but yeah, absolutely what you were saying, like, like pornography is used in so many ways to groom a victim of child sex trafficking to no. help desensitize them to the material that they're gonna be exposed to or be produced um, part in the production of. Um, and they, you know, it, it's, it's definitely intertwined the two issues. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about your guys' first responder um, protocol and what that kind of looks like, how you guys jump in to help these victims when they're identified. Yeah. Well, in 2014, uh, in Los Angeles County, where we're home based, um, you know, all the authorities got together and, you know, figuratively or maybe literally said out loud, these kids are victims, not criminals. Yeah. And, and that's one tragedy. Number one is that in many places around the country, uh, the 14 year old is considered the, the criminal, not the victim in mm -hmm. this situation. Right. So once uh, the child welfare system and the DCFS and all the key people that care about kids sort of all got together and said, we have to treat them like victims, not criminals. Well, then they also realize in that same breath, we need some specialized advocates to dispatch to that situation who are specially trained and experienced with working with child victims of sex trafficking, because that's what's happening. So we were the agency on the ground at that moment in relationship with everybody. And so we became contracted through the LA County system there. And um, we've got about eight to 10 advocates um, that are on call, like I said earlier, at any given time. And usually it's in the middle of the night, sometimes as a result of a law enforcement special operation sting operation or could just be the regular you know enforcement that's happening around the city at any given time mm -hmm. and then we get called and go out in the middle of the night and here's this child you know 10 12 mm -hmm. 13 14 years old who's wow. um oftentimes physically uh injured and so we're involving medical you know professionals in that moment maybe not in that moment physically injured but um everybody in that equation wants something from her in the best sense of the term you know they're trying to do their job so they're trying to get forensic evidence you know so they can go do a deal uh, you know uh, um, go the, the cops get the cops <laughs> the law enforcement can go and uh, do their job and and make a case and an investigation uh, there's other thing we we have the opportunity to show up and we have complete value add to this child we're bringing food typically we're bringing a change of clothes and she understands pretty quickly i say she they're mostly young girls but they're definitely young boys that are being trafficked yeah. as well um and she then um realizes that we have her very best interest at heart and then we get to walk with her as long as it takes it's it's right. it's really an honor to, to be able to do that for these kids yeah well and i love that you guys continue to walk with them because a lot a lot of the times the issue is that they fall back into the world of sex trafficking if if they're not being looked after so i think that's such important work that you guys are doing yeah agreed yeah, absolutely. um okay so i want to address a major misconception that people have is that sex trafficking or specifically here child sex trafficking is something that happens far away in other countries it's not happening here in the u.s obviously it's prevalent you said you're based in um la um but according to uh the national center for missing and exploited child children child sex trafficking happens in all 50 states. So it's happening here in the United States. Um, can you just speak to that misconception a little bit when, and explain to our audience maybe how sex trafficking, how that looks like here, um, specifically how these children are being tricked or forced into the life of child sex trafficking? Yeah, that's the biggest aha that still today, most people don't understand. They hear child sex trafficking and they're thinking about Thailand or Cambodia or some other place 10,000 miles away. And it's true, it is happening internationally in a, in a pretty ugly way as well. Um, but you're, you're getting to a really important point is that our country needs to wake up. And it's in the process of waking up. There's more and more conversations yeah. like this and there's more and more documentaries and you know, podcasts and things are talking yeah. about it. It's absolutely happening here in all 50 states, maybe even um, almost every zip code, if you will. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, the, the short answer as to how these 
kids become available to this reality in their life, um, usually the common denominator for these kids is an early childhood abuse of some kind, oftentimes a sexual abuse as a young child, long before the trafficker ever entered the picture. And so there's early childhood abuse and about 80% of the kids that we are working with as trafficking survivors are already in the foster care system. They've already had their family and their life blown up to the degree that the county or the government has come in and said, we're gonna take out that really bad situation and put you over here to protect you and keep you safe. Now, the problem is for that particular child with those circumstances, they don't have any examples. There's no working example in their mind of what a healthy male looks like. They've never been loved appropriately. They've never been protected appropriately. They've never had any of those things, almost never. And right. so now in walks a, an imposter, someone who's saying all the things that they would have loved to have heard when they were younger. Someone that's doing all the things early on that they would have ha loved to have had, some protection and some safety and some love and attention and all the healthiest forms. The problem is that because this child has never seen the correct version of that, she can't tell the difference between the incorrect version and for someone that means her harm. And that's the trafficker who comes in and at no point is he thinking that he loves her or cares about her, but he's saying all those things that she's longing to hear. In his mind, this is a financial transaction. She is a commodity to be bought and sold and he's gonna take the money for it. And at some point it, um, it sort of comes to light that that's what's happening. But the problem is she has no idea how to get out there's no one necessarily looking for her. And this just becomes the life that she surrenders to oftentimes, unless there's an intervention of some kind through us or through the law enforcement or whoever. So they're, they're just available because of their early childhood uh, trauma, many of them. Uh, there's a small percentage, of, it's an actual kidnapping like you see in the movies, but the biggest right. percentage is a pretend boyfriend walks in and says, I got a great plan for our life. And, uh, it, but by the time she figures it out, it's too late. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you mentioned, like the the trap or the kidnapping, the like taken movie scenario that yeah. absolutely happens. But um, I have a statistic here. I want to. I don't want to butcher it, so I'm going to read off of this. Um, a significant number of sex trafficking victims, um, roughly 36 percent, are trafficked by family members, um, and then also like roughly 60 percent of um, child sex trafficking victims are trafficked by boyfriends. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely happening and it's happening to people that they know and oftentimes trust, um, which um, can be problematic in that way. Um, yeah. I kind of want to segue a little bit into, you guys had a huge milestone recently where you guys um, have been uh, uh, licensed um, to become a foster family um, foster family agency under the Saving Innocence umbrella. Right. So. Um, that's a huge milestone. Can you explain a little bit why this is such an important milestone and what it has to do with this issue that we're talking about? Yeah, we're super excited about this. Uh, through our work with these trafficking uh, victims, survivors, uh, we found out something really obvious early on, that the biggest contributor to their availability, like I just mentioned a little while ago, is the lack of a healthy, intact, loving, and protective family. Yeah. They were looking for all the things that they should have had from their regular family that they weren't getting and they went down this other path and to no surprise it's the largest barrier for their swift and complete escape there's no place to go back to this loving healthy protective and intact and so maybe the most strategic thing we could possibly do is to help find and train the correct family who's got enough room in their heart and their home to be trained specifically for what these kids have been through supported ongoingly by us. We're gonna set up camp in our front yard and we're gonna make sure it goes well. Not really, we're not gonna invade your front yard, figuratively. <laughs> but, um, and when we're gonna get these kids the families they deserve. And on our website, savingnesses.org slash foster, there's a lot more information. There's an animated video, kind of explainer video. It's pretty powerful that we're actually gonna have the world debut at our gala on September 9th. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But yeah. it's there now, you could go and watch it right now. And uh, if you know anyone in the greater LA area that uh, has enough room in their heart and their home, at least to start the conversation, yeah. send us a note. We'd love to have that conversation with you. That's awesome. That's such a huge milestone. Um, also, with the work that you guys do with helping to educate people on this issue, you guys offer a training as well. Can you talk a little bit about that training, what it is, what people can expect from it, who, who it's meant for? Yeah. 
you know, through the first, you know, 10 years of Saving Innocence, we sort of accumulated all this experience and knowledge of this space. And then we started getting inundated with requests to come physically and go train their agency or their, you know, their group in some other state. And we, and we had done a lot of that. But we thought we have to, we have to do a brain dump. We have to dump all this into a place. So we created a training course, an online training course, savingessence.org slash training. And uh, there's a CSEC, and that acronym is Commercially Sexually Exploited Children. There's a CSEC training course. There's 46 training videos. There's uh, several survivors on there talking about their experiences. There's the professionals. There's law enforcement. And, and it's really for anyone who really wants to take a deep dive and better understand this. You don't have to be a social worker uh, to take it, although there are lots of social workers that are taking it. We actually had the FBI bought a package recently so that they could learn more about what's happening. And um, we're very proud of it. We think it turned out pretty well. And we invite anyone to go check it out and um, have your own online training course. Yeah, that's incredible. And we appreciate you guys sharing the information that you have in a way that's um, accessible to everyone. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, more about how our audience can learn about this issue and help be part of the solution for it? Well, the first stop, I would invite everyone to just go to our website. There's five or six videos there. There's survivors telling their stories. There's those of us talking about it. There's some infographics, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. And take a deep dive. Google, Google up trafficking and just learn about it. That's step one. Learn about it, what it is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're getting at, if I'm not mistaken, Jasmine, is um, you already showed it once. Yes. Uh, I had a really uh, interesting experience. Took about three years and partnered with a number of survivors. In fact, my co-author... Um, is on our staff and she survived 10 years herself of trafficking. And, and there's a number of professionals that are involved in this book um, called Men Fight For Me. And the fight for me part came directly from words we heard from a survivor say, uh, after five months of this trauma that was happening in her life, she said out loud, I heard her, I was in the room. She said, I could no longer fight for myself. I needed someone to fight for me. Mm -hmm. and, and that lit a fire in me um, because she's telling me and anyone who's listening, that there's a lot of survivors out there, a lot of victims out there that want to get out, but they've lost the will, the energy, the, the vision. They can't see a way out. They needed someone to come and fight for them. And then we stack that on top of the fact that most of the buyers are men, most of the sellers are men. And so we added the word men to the title. She didn't say that. And so there's this book, it's for everybody. And you're reading it right now. I look forward to hearing yeah. your words. I don't know if you finished it. There it is. But um, there's a, you know, probably 80% of the book has nothing to do with whether you're a man or a woman. It's breaking down the issue and it's survivors telling their stories and all those things. Um, but there is a good 20% that I'm using my male voice <laughs> to challenge men to step up, get off the sidelines, get involved in this fight. It is a battle. It is a fight. And we need a bunch of strong, healthy men to do something positive in this fight and push against all this exploitation, which we have passively let happen right under our nose, if not actively participated in it. It's here and it's roaring like a lion. And so we're going to need to mobilize everybody. But there's already a bunch of great, strong women fighting. Awesome. Keep doing it, ladies. You're, you're phenomenal. <laughs> the missing link here, the missing gap is a bunch of strong men that uh, we need to join this fight. And that's, that's what the book's trying to get at. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's for everyone. So, I mean, men's all the title, but it's not just for men. Um, like personally reading this book and knowing great men in my life who don't want to obviously fuel this exploitation. Um, it's great information to just kind of like read, educate yourself on, get fired up and share with um, other people or other men in your life that maybe aren't aware about this issue. And it's super important to have men speaking up specifically about this. Um, Cause like you mentioned a lot of, um, the perpetrators are men. Um, so that's great. Um, I do. I love the book. Um, I have lots of tabs that I've been saving <laughs> of things that have really stood up to me. Um, oh, good. But can you tell our audience where they can find it? Yeah, we have a little website called fightforme.net. And um, the, uh, it's going to live right there. There's resources. Fight the New Drug is, is, is linked there. In addition to all these amazing survivors that are in the book and their books and their podcasts and their things, um, we're going to be releasing blogs and, you know, just keep the conversation alive. It, it's for sale on Amazon, so you can just go right there. Okay. But if you go to fightforme.net, that's a one click there to buy it. But then all the other stuff is, is there as well to just help, help the, the conversation. That's awesome. Um, what else can our audience do to help support the work that you guys are doing at Saving Innocence? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, you know, the big thing that's getting real big in the window right now is on September 9th, um, we have uh, our virtual gala, Thursday, September 9th at 7 p.m. 
streamed live on our website, savinginnocence.org. If you go there right now, .org slash gala, there's a website, there's a free version. We want to break the internet. So thank you for giving us your platform, Fight the New Drug. But um, there's a free version, just everybody watch. Uh, but there's also a paid version. If you're to the place where like, I would like to support the organization, you can buy a ticket, we'll send you a box full of swag and stuff just for the, for the, as a thank you. You can sponsor a virtual table, that's a little more, we'll send you more swag. You could be a corporate sponsor, uh, there's different levels. Um, but I would ask your viewers to follow savinginnocence.org. Um, go to the website, but follow us on social media at Saving Innocence. We're posting things all the time now. Share it. Um, we want to get as many people tuned in on September 9th as possible. That's a great way. And in that, in that virtual gala, there'll be an opportunity to become financially involved. You can make a donation that night or even right now. Mm -hmm. um, and as you poke around our website, you'll see things like an Amazon wish list and other things. We celebrate birthdays and graduations for our kids all the time. And so we depend on the public to go on our Amazon wish list. This technology we have is crazy. Yeah, it can I be, love that. <laughs> it can be used for ugly things like what we're talking about. Right. But it can also be used for beautiful things. Like you can send a little birthday present to one of the kids we're celebrating. So easy. One click push the button <laughs> and uh, stuff will show up that we can celebrate our kids with. But the big one is our virtual gal. We invite everybody to tune in and watch that. Awesome. Great. So just for a reminder for our audience, that's on Thursday, September 9th um, at 7 PM. That's Pacific standard time. Right. Um, Cause you guys are in California, but, um, and then you can go to saving org to go and get your free ticket or um, purchase a ticket to help support the gala as well. Um, awesome. So, is there anything else? I just want to leave you another opportunity to say anything else um, that we might have not covered or anything else you want to kind of say to our audience? Well, gosh, thank you. We covered a lot of ground here. Um, I would just urge and challenge all of your listeners to take another step forward. Um, this is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. More people are enslaved through human trafficking, more people enslaved right now than at any time in human history. That you think that as a society, as a humanity, we've progressed in a lot of ways, and in some ways we have. Yeah. But in this particular way, maybe the most egregious violation against humanity is one person asserting ownership over another person. It's called the modern day slavery. The problem is bigger now than it's ever, ever been. So we need everybody. We don't just need a few people. Oh, we'll let somebody else handle it. We need everybody to do what they can do. And maybe the first step is just go to our website or somebody's website and just learn some things. Great. Now what? Well, maybe get this book we're taught. There's not a shameless plug, but there's, there's a lot of challenge <laughs> in that book. Um, do that. Um, and take another step forward. I challenge and urge everybody. And then again, for my particular space as a man, I'd like to challenge all the men watching right now. And those of you who have brothers and uncles and dads and sons, I want to challenge all you men to leave some things behind that are diminishing and harming women and step into a, po a powerful, authentic, healthy version of masculinity that will bring healing to the world instead of further damage. And that's, that's my last word, I suppose, Jasmine. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Um, we got a question from our audience to show the cover of the book again. So there's the book. It's called Men Fight For Me. You can find it at fightforme.net. Um, you can learn more about Saving Innocence at savinginnocence.org. And you can um, get information about the gala and get your ticket at Saving innocencegala.org. So Alan, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have your podcast episode um, for our podcast, Consider Before Consuming, coming out next Wednesday, September 1st. So if you guys enjoyed this conversation with Alan, I highly encourage you to listen to that episode when it's released um, on Wednesday, September 1st, where you can hear Alan talk a bit more um, on our podcast about the work that he's doing at Saving Innocence. So thank you so much for the work that you guys are doing at Saving Innocence and for the work you specifically are doing. Um, we appreciate voices like you in this movement. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. And all of that right back at you. Appreciate all the work you're doing. And uh, we're, we're a good team. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, Alan, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.